Presentation three, the social contract. Social contract by definition is when a nation or a community of people give up some of their rights and services to the government, and in return, their government protects them and helps provide for them. In the view of Locke, if the government does not fulfill its part of the bargain, the people have the right to rebel. In Bastards of the Party, we saw that the people exercised their right to rebel in the forms of the Black Panther Party and the US organization in the 50s and 60s. This was in response to the racism that was highly prevalent in America, and still is prevalent in America. This right to rebel was taken away when these organizations, especially the Black Panther Party, were taken out by the US government. In some cases, members even assassinated. The gangs, the Bloods and the Crips, in the 70s and 80s were what filled the void left by the Black Panther and the US organizations. The rebellion, to some extent, had failed the African-American youth. And when the rebellion against the government failed, there was some, to some degree they rebelled against each other. Their opportunities were limited. Jobs due to racism and changing times were hard to come by. Meanwhile, the American government was fine with policing and arresting young men and women of color, but not up for looking up why gang violence was happening in the first place. And they weren't up for looking up why the, there were such skewed incarceration rates comparing whites versus people of color. The government also wasn't up for looking, for looking up its own connection to the fall of the political groups that left a void in the community in the first place that was filled by the gangs. To recap, the government had failed to protect and support its people of color, especially African Americans, in the 50s and 60s. In the 70s and 80s, it had no interest in helping people in the gang-driven violence and turned a blind eye to the suffering it had helped cause, violating the social contract once again. In Marx, Capitalism and Alienation, it was noted that without even a job or a true purpose, a person becomes miserable in his work. Work is for monetary gain and the worker is pit against his fellow man, dissolving empathy and community boundaries. The gang lifestyle became a replacement for work in the absence of actual work. And much like capitalism work, a job in capitalism, when combined with the view that money was a measure of self-worth, this contributed to the cutthroatness of the lifestyle, of the gang lifestyle. Money was scarce, and money was life. Money was needed for any true self-worth. And as Elijah Anderson notes in Decent and Street Families, violent action is a result of that low self-worth and self-esteem. Thus, the formation of gangs and the rise of violence among people of color and especially African American communities in the 70s and 80s was jump-started by the original breach of the social contract by the American government. Basically, what had happened, step one, Social contract be breached by the government, racism not addressed by the government, often violent, always bad, especially geared towards African Americans. Two, exercise of the social contract rights by the African Americans and the rise of the Black Panther and other groups to counter the racism. Three, another social contract breached by the government in which it literally stomps these groups out without really addressing their concerns for the most part. Four, a new generation is left with the same racism that keeps them out of jobs and opportunities, a lowered sense of self-worth, and nowhere constructive to turn. The old organizations were taken out of the picture, and gangs were the replacement. In essence, the breach of the social contract by the American government was one of the main contributing factors to the rise of gangs, like the Bloods and the Crips in the 70s and 80s.